Beans, beans are good for your heart. Bean, beans make you fart. The more you fart, the more you... Who gives a shit? Because it's time for Lucky Time Explosion! And I hope you did have your morning beans. Yeah, happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Friday, we got some stuff going on today, or rather our friends do. Uh, Akeem over at Quiet Lunch uh, at the Yard tonight from 6 to 9 is having a show called The New Natives. Go check it out. That's 234 Fifth Avenue, The Yard. Uh, Say you're there for Quiet Lunch. Yes, and be quiet. That's super quiet. Super quiet. But anyways, yeah, the yard is a pretty cool place. They've been supporting artists for a really long time. I think I did a show there a long time ago. Yeah, actually, they are cool. Um, it's a co-working space, if you don't know, uh, similar to like WeWork or something. Mm. But last time I was there, I was talking to uh, somebody who was like the director of like their art programming. Right. And they put on a lot of shows. So they put a lot of work up into, um, into like the hallways. So it's like a WeWork for artists. It's not for artists specifically. It's like a WeWork. Just anybody can rent an office there, but they do go above and beyond as far as supporting the arts by having a person responsible for hanging art in the space. And that is a big deal. I or used to letting, be an art handler. It's right. a big job. Yeah, it's a big job. Or letting uh, the residents like Akeem and Quiet Lunch Magazine have some small events uh, like this show that I just plugged. Uh, and I actually bought a piece from there. That's really cool. Yeah, if probably. you're an artist or a curator, you should look into that uh, space to see if you want to, uh, you know, do your own show. That's, yeah. that's a great opportunity. Check it out. And if you're in need of a photo studio, you know where to come. That's you right. So less. But yeah, also Akeem, I, I need to plug that as well uh, next week, uh, which will be the first week of March and the last week of March. Akeem will be here with a show called Four Women uh, for International Women's Week. And we're going to actually have visiting hours, which is rare. Usually you have to make an appointment. Or we only do, uh, you know, private parties, but we're going to be open from noon to five, all the first week of March and the last week of March. So come by, say hi, get some stickers, yeah. say what up. It's cool because we will be here. You yeah, get to we're meet really us. Cool. And um, where we're recording right here, this is the facility. I mean, yeah. uh, you get to see behind the scenes what's going on. So take the opportunity to stop by and see the show next week, you know, meet and greet with us, you know. Yeah. Great thing to do. Maybe Definitely. you can join the Solus community. It's very nice. And it's really cool because we're here. Uh, another, speaking of Solus community, we got another plug here. Uh, later in the month, March 2nd, um, well, I guess that's actually coming up pretty soon. That's a Saturday uh, from 5 to 8. One of our lovely members, uh, Sharon Volpe, is going to have some work in an International Women's Day exhibition. This space is that it's going to be at Awita, New York Studio, 12 to 7 p.m. That's in Brooklyn at 474 South 2nd Street, Brooklyn. Mm. Yep. We'll that drop the details awesome. in the uh, in the description as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, so today there's a few things going on. It's it's leap year, um, and that doesn't happen too often. It happens True. every four years. Uh, right. I read that it's like the chances of becoming a leap year baby is like one out of 1,141 or something like that. So what happens if you're a leap year baby? You just don't get a birthday every, every four years. That's the thing. And so you stay forever young, like that song forever young. Sorry. So like Dracula and immortals and all that are just, they're made up. They're all just leap year babies. This could be very Those 400 year old people you hear about, you know, that's awesome. That's them. That's what's going on. You see anything weird online lately, Morgan? Well, <sighs> <laughs> my own work, my own strange things. <laughs> but that, that, that leads me to a project that I started a long time ago. It was based off Vaporwave, uh, for my love for Vaporwave and uh, vapor. senior citizens. <laughs> senior citizens? Yeah, my love for senior citizens. Usually Vaporwave and senior citizens don't tend to go together. And that's why I created Grandpa Wave. Grandpa wave. I don't think it's really caught on. It's a sleeper. I think that maybe in a few years, people are like, oh, you know, like they'll, they'll create a cult around it. They'll be like, Grandpa wave, Grandpa wave. <laughs> Tell and me what Grandpa like, wave is. What the heck is Grandpa Morgan, wave? Morgan, and then they'll like resurrect me with some weird juices, you know, like uh, plasma. Like, like blood? We need, we need plasma. So is vaporwave related to like plasma infusions? It's, it's going to have to be. So, nice. yeah, basically, I just infused, you know, pictures of old people looking awkward in um, with a background maybe from an old like 1983 um, like Commodore 64 game or something. I don't know. Well, is this your, well, for those watching? We'll put it up on the green screen. Yeah, here. there's some could. there's some uh, grandpa wave for you. Right. Like I said, it didn't catch on. But then I fell into this thing. There's something called grandpa core. 
which is a, a lifestyle and a way of dressing. It's, 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 yeah, it's called grandpa core. And basically you wear your pants up really high with your belt <laughs> and you wear like this brownish sweater sometimes with buttons. Maybe it's like a vest, but look, look up grandpa, core. Google it. Grandpa core. And it's a thing. Looking for a new fashion, uh, try something new, try grandpa core. Dang. Look into it. It's hot. <laughs> I think it's hot. We'll see. You know? that That's kind of weird. I'm going to look more into it. There's so many different waves. Like there's vapor wave, there's Simpsons wave. You know about Simpsons wave? No. Well, it sounds kind of like grandpa wave because it's just vapor wave, but always including the Simpsons. Right. So you, if you go to type Simpson wave into uh, YouTube and you'll find a lot of videos of like chopped up video of the Simpsons put to vaporwave music. I, I'm, I'm happy that vaporwave's still around. It's 2004. And I oh, think this came out like away. in what? This came like 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Is that when it started? I think it started. I mean, from my understanding of vaporwave, it started around um, like 2014, 16. Because of that album. Yeah. Macintosh Plus was like the quintessential, quintessential vaporwave album. Can you describe the the cover again? And you probably, if you ever, I think it's probably one of the yeah, first like images that, that would pop up if you just typed in vaporwave. But it you is. know, you have a Ro Roman sculpture, a bust yeah. on a on a pillar, checkered floor going into the distance. You get your pinks, pink, you got your clouds, you got you know, I old like PC computers. That's the stuff I love. I love the reappropriate, like the bringing back the vintage, like you know, Windows ninety five uh, logos, all of the old computer logos, that I kind love of stuff. It. Because I, I love the history of tech, you know? I'll let it be known. I'm 44 and you are. Oh my God. I'm 39. Right. So we're from the same period. We grew yeah. up growing up with those visuals. Like right. I got a, one of my, my first computers, I got at Sears and it was a Packard Bell. And, uh, you know, like the intro to Packard Bell disc and all the weird utilities and all the, like the shitty pixelated graphics. And I mean, I, a lot of <laughs> this, awesome. my first art making experiences came from like MS Paint. Right. You know, from uh, or even further than that, I remember programming um, in basic uh, on, you know, in DOS and using basic the two like make graphics that flash because that was like the easiest thing I could do. Like, you know, you program it out, like change the color of the screen it rapidly. Right. flashes. Do you remember the, the coded game that came with it? The where you th you're the monkeys on the. Um the tat like in the city and you're throwing the bananas and you i don't to, like, remember that is that like one of those games where you had to um it came with like a book no and you it was plugged just it like, in yourself do you remember it was that? one of the easier things that you can code out and it was just like one picture of a city and two monkeys and you have to hit the monkey with your banana first to blow him up before he blows you up with his banana this is kind of like like um, worms or something we'll put it up worms yeah okay it's it's similar to worms let me watch it like, i've never seen this thing Wow. Blow him up, monkey. Oh Rock his God. world with that crazy pixelated my banana God. sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Do you remember, though, when video games used to come in a, a book and you'd have to code it yourself in order to play it? That's like I, the I, very earliest video games. They, were, they, were not, they didn't have discs yet, right? They didn't have media for computers because they were so new that like everything was inside of them. Or maybe they started doing like audio tapes. That would kind of transmit right. data. I did have for the Atari 800. I had um, an a audio drive tape drive where it would load a game from an, an audio cassette. I right. think it was called Sammy the Sea Dragon. Nice, good memory. Uh, but before that, before they even had figured out how to like you know put code onto an audio tape, um, the code was simple enough that it would just come in like a binder, like a book. What a bunch of and lazy you would have bums. To <laughs> Like you would listen, have to put man, in the whole game code one line at a idea, time, but I'm not doing it. Here's the book. <laughs> no, that's the way they They're would crazy. do it. They, they came up with it and they put it down and you'd have to go type line by line, every single <laughs> line of code. <laughs> and now you can't do it these days, but now we have AI and another talk of the internet right now is of course the Willy Wonka festival. Have you heard of this? I, uh, yeah, it's, yes. Yes. Everyone's disturbing. we're a little late on it, but uh, it's, it's so funny that I feel like we should have to talk about it, especially because of its relation to art with the AI art apocalypse that we are experiencing right now. Like what are the, some of the worst things that can happen with AI? And this is kind of like a good example of it because the whole, the whole festival was promoted with AI art. So like all of the promo, Oh, you're, I see the posters, you know, and then yeah, everyone. Yeah, the posters, the right. ads, they used AI art and AI generations of what it could be like or what it might be like, or even just, honestly, what I saw was just a lot of bad Willy Wonka AI art. 
and then just like slapped on a poster. Right. That's that's sad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, this is the future. You can make so, anything look like yeah, anything and everyone will believe. And then I think they had to pay like forty dollars to get in. And, and it was yeah. like 20,000 square feet with like a few plastic mushrooms and <laughs> two super depressed people. I think it was just yeah. one guy that played Willy Wonka who's red, had red hair and looked absolutely nothing like Willy Wonka whatsoever. Right. And then a very sad and depressed Oompa Lady yeah, who one was stationed Oompa. at a table with a few <laughs> like Bur beakers, beakers and bubblers and schnitzels. And Everybody says it looks like a meth lab. And it, uh, I think <laughs> actually did. that was a cover up to just produce meth. It might, it might have been the I whole fucking it, thing. Yeah. But yeah, if you hadn't heard about it, it was a Willy Wonka experience for children that um, that was promoted and, you know, it was going to be amazing 20,000 feet, square feet um, experience. And then when they got there after paying 40 bucks, it was just like one bouncy castle and like a few really sad props strewn around this empty concrete warehouse with like those um, those like uh, booth dividers. That you see at like Comic Con, like the black curtains on. What do the they call oh lum luminal spaces? Liminal spaces. Liminal. Yeah, Limin liminal spaces are <laughs> no. spaces that that you that look familiar to you, but you know are very plain, like uh, places in between in transit, dreams. like uh, in your dreams, like in a hallway. I'm really into those. My lobby is kind of a liminal space in my building, so it's all like that red marble from the '80s, you know, that everyone was oh, that's, crazy that's with. That's great. Wasn't there? There was that movie called Schminky Do. That's not a thing. What? There was a movie that was just like that whole like viewpoint through a, a VHS. It was like a scriddle madink. Scriddly dink. You're just making up words. Engelbert Humperdink. <laughs> That's a person. You know, since I'm a collage Morgan artist. Morgan forgot to take his pills this morning, I think. I, uh, I go through a lot, of, like I talked about before, I, I yeah. use encyclopedias and they're all outdated. So, you know, every once in a while I'm like skimming through these old encyclopedias, you know, things you know pop out and you're like oh i'm gonna read this this is pretty crazy um there was and i forgot what he did but there was an engelbert humperdinck before engelbert humperdinck and i was yeah. like i felt like lied to i was like with a name like that he must be the only engelbert humperdinck only to find out that Names there was another humperdinck there's been i, I wonder upset. how many morgan lappins there have been well quite a lot i could tell you i've known mm, in history I never looked into the history, but when I first went on Facebook, I tried to, you know, seek out um, every other Morgan Lappin, because if you've seen Highlander, as you, you know, there could be only one. Yeah, and you have there to chop their one. head off you with have to a chop sword head off. if you don't. So I found one kid that lived in Bucky, Ireland. He, mm -hmm. he just looked like, he looked AI generated, but this is going back before <laughs> AI, so I guess he's real. And then there is this kind of, and I'm sorry if you like find me and listen to this, it's just like very annoying looking a uh, young white girl named Morgan Lappin, and, and there's very little <laughs> on her, but this kid Buck, from Bucky, Ireland, I actually, uh, on Facebook, I said that. I'm like, there could be only one. And then I realized, I'm like, you're threatening like a, an 11 year old kid. In yeah, Ireland. That, don't do that. You're threatening his <laughs> life. And like, you're like, I'm going to chop wasting. your head off. And then his mom is like, can <laughs> you, I'm close. calling the police. I'm yeah. calling the police. No, actually, I ran into another Brandon Wise carver on Facebook. Did you? And find uh, him and kick his ass. No, but he. I actually feel really bad about this because I, I, we, I can't remember. We we started communicate because my name is so unique. If you hear another wise carver, I'm directly related to them, and I didn't look like I was really related to this kid. Uh, and I was, I wanted to know more about him. And then he was coming to New York, and he like messaged. Was he me. Chinese? He's like, no, but he's like, I'm coming to New York. Uh, let's meet up. And I got scared actually. And <laughs> if you're I'm sorry, I was like. I do want to meet this other wise carver. Like now I'm a, little, on a date. I'm a little worried. It's like going on a date with yourself. Yeah, and I kind of blew him off just because I was a little bit like freaked out. Oh, I was like, oh, I, I don't know. But I should I should definitely hit him up next time. You're, so Brandon, sorry if you're watching. Yeah, this. no, I thought this you were going to tell this beautiful story about no. creating relationship with the other Brandon and kidnapping him and yeah. building like this weird like. I have made a lot of good friends and, online though. Like uh, my earliest and oldest friend I made online. Um, I think online stuff is crazy. Like. The yeah, it was amount way different of back then. It is different, but it was a little different, but it, was it wasn't on, as regular. It wasn't as common. Everybody had like, you know, profiles and was like on AOL chat rooms and stuff. Right. But I feel like now a majority of our socialization is like online. Maybe that's just me because I'm terminally online, but there's like. No, a, it was for me. It was just in a different way. Especially I, after I was COVID. On Merck, M I R C. Oh, Internet yeah. relay chat on the undernet. I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but that was, you know, before 
the World Wide Web. That was Direct Connect. You just like, I think QModem was the name of the program that you utilized to log into um, IRC. But I just would stare and sit there and talk to people from different places for years and years and years right. and just sit there. And then I, I fell in love with somebody from California and uh, her name was Freckles. Uh, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> and uh, we sent each other like letters and pictures. And then she, oh man, she fell in love with this hacker named Olaf. And I was so pissed. I'm like, fucking Olaf. First, he was a friend of both of ours, you know, within the chat, you know, like whatever. And then he fucking stole Freckles. Did you ever make any art about Freckles? No. No. I think her name was. You're, going, you're just going down the Sarah lane. Hill, if I remember correctly. Man. Sarah Hill. No. Yeah. But no, I, I've met a lot of mm. really interesting people online and had a lot of cool contacts, you know, and by just way of being active on the space, uh, I got a call this morning, actually, from the people who make the painting VR app that I use. Holy shit. Uh, and I'm going to work with them in some capacity and that's I'm super cool. happy about it. But, you know, that's just uh, from you're, you're posting part of the, and tagging them. And yeah, you're going to be part of the evolution of the future of VR art. I, you're going to be a heavy hand. In the next phase. Well, I that's would, huge. I would like to really, you know, as if if I do have any influence on art online in the future, uh, I think some of these issues with uh, AI art is in, are interesting. And I've had my mind change pretty recently from a video. Like I've always been a bit of a defender of it because I think people who are just like super anti AI art stuff uh, are being short sighted and like. And you're not. It's not going to. You're well, not, I'm not and, saying I'm being. What, what is your stance on it? How do you? My stance on it currently is that it is just another tool, that it's something that's not going away. However, I think that we are in a space right now where we're deciding the laws around it. Oh, right. And that has to. So we're yeah. figuring out what, who's getting paid for what, you know, what is stealing, what is theft, and what is not, what is just part of this model. And the thing that I find interesting, there's a really good video about this you can go watch on YouTube. Uh, you know, if you're watching us on YouTube now, pause it, go watch it, come back. Uh, it's called the AI art apocalypse from a channel called hello future me. And it's this dude who's just takes like an hour and a half to kind of go through all the theories, all the, um, the chatter, the controversy about it. And Has anybody this... been sued yet? Has anybody gotten in trouble? Has um, there been any? Like... The Willy Wonka people are pretty messed up. <laughs> I think everyone's think... fucked up from that. <laughs> yeah, but no. The, so the, the point I'm trying to make is that, or the point that this guy made too, is that um, there are all, AI stuff is not just art. You know, just like NFTs were not just art. They were non-fungible tokens you could trade for anything. Uh, and they could be anything. Mostly for drugs. Or, or, or like, you know, entry to some super douchey uh, sushi bar that you can only get at if you have this NFT or whatever. Um, but the point he was making was about licensing and about how for music AI, right? There's these, there's these AIs that create music and they're doing their due diligence to make sure that the artists and the labels and stuff from the music are compensated for having their work um, help train these algorithms. But for some reason, while the AI space uh, seems to respect musicians, right, they don't give uh, two flying poops about artists. So artists are not getting compensated and their stuff is getting put into these, uh, these models, you know, without their consent. Uh, and there is a precedent to pay people for this, you know, through the, the, the AI apps. And also, there's a ton of art that is public domain. There's a ton of artists like myself who would happily give their art into training the model. Um, but you see now, I think most of the people who are, have a legitimate grievance about their art being like ripped off or stolen through AI art, um, because you see this argument a lot that it's like, and I've made this argument. That's why I recommend that video, because that video kind of changed my mind on some of these basic arguments I've been making. like how saying that it's just it's you know we've been humans have been doing this the entire time too like we've taken influences and then remixed it and right. made new art with it well it's a little different when the computer does it and it's really different when you can type the artist's name oh, into yeah. the mean, prompt and i've and been then, making ai for a long time and so you can do things like okay in the style uh, of recreate 
Ren and Stimpy in the style of Norman Rockwell. Right. You could do that. You could right. say, uh, in the, do President uh, Reagan in the style of uh, Ralph Bakshi. Right. <laughs> that would be interesting. But, and for some um, reason, and, and certain things like that, like Norman Rockwell, somebody who's been dead for so long, whose work is, um, you know, a lot more, could more possibly like open source, right? Right. There's so much stuff that is out there. Uh, there's so much art that is free to use. That's public domain. So I think that we should be compensating artists for their contributions to these models. And if we're not going to do that, then we should stick to making our models through um, public domain or volunteered material. That's my stance on it. But <clears throat> I, and I do think that, you know, a big problem with it, too, is also just taste. Like a lot of people are like, oh, AI is so ugly. AI art is so ugly. And it's like, yeah, well, that's the stuff that they kicks out. Like, you know, a lot of art. Well, earlier, too. earlier on, I forgot the name of the program, but it, it was horrible. Mid but Journey? now there's a whole, there's no, I forgot what it's called. There's so there's many. There's a few of them. It was called like something with crayon or cray, cray something. But now there's a whole love that shitty AI aesthetic, like for it to look bad with the, you know, mutated mushed and right. mushy. There's, there's a lot of. The seven fingers know, and like the face all. That. Yeah, um, and now they're moving, and now, pretty soon you're not going to be able to tell what's real and what's not. Oh, that's it's, true. Yeah, now you see crazy. a lot of motion ones and like animation stuff. And that's then, the jam. It keeps on getting easier and easier to do. I mean, I I used to go balls to the wall with making AI when I first found out about it. Style diffusion. And I was like, anything I can think of, it will just appear, and it does. It, it it's pretty fucking wild. Um, obviously, a lot of bad things can happen with that but have you uh, trained the model yet it. on yourself because you know you can you can no, like uh, I never train did. i never did but you know that's interesting how you, you can know, make how a do clone I train of yourself to uh, do collage well no Very you no i'm saying you train it to speak and sound oh, and look like you man that's fucked up. so you can make know. your own like online avatar that sounds and looks exactly like you and then you can just type a whole bunch of stuff in and it'll say it and do it that's very strange it's gonna get weirder man the lines are gonna get blurred reality is gonna get stranger and uh, speaking of, uh, this is kind of like off topic, but on the topic of um, reality and versus online and stuff, another video I watched this weekend was, um, it, it's older, I think it's a few months old now, but if you, do you know the game Rust? Oh yes, no, no, but you told me about this, Explain. I told you about this, yeah, so Explain. the game Rust is like a survival um, battle game where you have to like get resources and build a little base and then like protect yourself from invading forces. Uh, and I watched this video that was like an hour and a half long and it was only one of like hundreds and hundreds of videos made about this event. But I guess a few months back they made the biggest rust map ever. That was like a recreation of planet earth and all the countries in it. Uh, and then they had like a three day long, basically world war. And like there's 3000 players involved, 3000 players involved. And there was like politics and drama. And I, I got so enraptured in this video. I'll, I'll leave a link there too. It was so good. It had like cinematic music and you know, all these plots like assassinate people and, you know, making alliances and breaking them. And it was just so real for those people. I'm sure it was real for me. I was like caught up in it. So it's really interesting to see how the lines between reality and uh, the online world are going to keep blending together. Uh, I, uh, and you're going to make Grandpa Wave pop I, off. I mean, I, I hope. Like I said, it might be a sleeper. Also, uh, randomly, you know, today was the day that Ja Rule was born. Did you know that? I did not know that. And, and talking about NFTs before, I met him a long time ago uh, when they started doing the uh, New York City NFT conferences. Oh, God. And I yeah. met him there, and uh, I was working with somebody at the time who was taking advantage of me. Uh -huh. And um, I had a card with a QR code, and I ran up to Ja Rule. I'm like, yo, Ja, what's up? We're making NFTs. I know you're into NFTs. You should take a look at our work. And I show him, I'm like, well, you have to do a scan QR code. He's like, what is that? I'm like, that's a QR code. He's like, well, what's that? I'm like, you actually take your phone to it, and you hover it over the QR code, and it will bring you to wherever you want them to go, like to the website. He's like, no. I'm like, yeah, like I shed light for Ja Rule about QR codes. He had no idea. And we were at an NFT conference. It was very That's interesting. Funny. But uh, he was excited. Uh, he hugged me. He embraced me. <laughs> uh, ja Rule. Ja Rule. I have one Ja Rule story, but it was, not, it was not that fun. I went to, I got invited to some Red Bull event. It was like a Red Bull secret concert thing. So mm. like the guest was like, no one knew who the guest was going to be. Uh, and I go down there and it's like, um, I was feeling saucy. So I'm in my bathrobe 
right? I'm in like a shitty bathroom. I have like long hair at the time. But I, br- I brought like three of my friends were with me and they were like cute girls. So they let me in anyway. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I'm walking around my bathroom getting this um, Red Bull and vodka, you know, drinks. And <laughs> it's in a old bank basement and they have this huge vault. Nice. Anyway, Ja Rule was the, was the artist who was <laughs> playing at this thing. But it was that this thing seared into my memory, this event, even though it's like I've been to a lot of stuff like that in New York. It got seared into my memory because the catering situation, they had like those brown folding tables. Wow. Old you know school. what I mean? Old school. It's like the veneer. Yeah. Not no tablecloth or anything. And like beaten up and dinged up. And this is forever. starting to sound like the Willy Wonka experience. It kind of was. <laughs> this part, this part of the night was totally like that. I mean, not only do they have nothing but Red Bull and vodka at the bar. <laughs> But they had this these brown tables and the catering was literally like seven garbage bags filled with just McDonald's cheeseburgers that were like already cold. And they were just like pouring them on the table. That's just wild. like like an animal feeding trough down there. And I was like, this is this is so sounds like an AI experience. Sounds like an AI experience. Yeah. I'm sure that they would have used AI art for their I'm out sure for their be freaking flyer if they visual had worlds created for VR. I mean, it is gonna get insane. And I hope I'm just Rumple Stilts can write through it. Well, hey, we only have a couple minutes left. Let's even... play them out. Let's play them out with some of your weirdest AI creations, huh? Let's see a few or four of them. Oh man. Maybe some grandpa wave music to to go with. It. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's usually eight bit music and i don't know just look into it just look into it feel the grandpa Love please the grandpa. get into vapor grandpa wave for morgan yeah. and take care of your senior citizens call your parents call your shrek is love shrek is life don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel yes, please if you've watched the whole thing if you're still here we love you and, and we thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next week please also, like subscribe and check share. out our patreon that yes. we're going to start populating that we are updating everything we're really getting into this so we're going to start dropping some comedy nuggets on there if you want to see morgan's depraved grandpa playpen i'm gonna hide some nuggets you probably for the patreon and and when we do we're we're gonna let you know so all right get you get your dollars out for the patreon and 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 support your local (laughs) podcast (laughs) all right see you guys later bye thank you for listening to lucky time explosion Watch the video edition on Patreon, a green screen extravaganza experience available exclusively to official Lucky Timers. This episode was recorded at Sola Studios in Manhattan, New York, helping artists make cool shit since 2016.